If you have your Bibles, turn with me, and we're, we're going to get into our message this morning. In the first, uh, first John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 21, has been my theme throughout this month. I've been preaching uh, from one topic to the next about it, and uh, today we're going to wrap this up. It's called Love Perfected. Love Perfected. And today is uh, the, the scripture, the text that I'm going to be taking it from is 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 16 through 21. Chapter, uh, chapter 4, 1 John, verse 16 through 21. And I'm going to be referring some to a couple of the other references that we've used and, and some other texts. But I really, this morning, I just want to, I want to let you know that without a doubt, you need to know this. You need to know this no matter what you're facing or what your circumstances are or what your situation is, that you are loved. God loves you. God loves you. Listen, not because you're so cute and cuddly, not because you're so rich, and definitely not because you're so good looking. God loves you because you are made in the image of his eye. You are made in the image of God, and you are made to please God, and you're to bring glory to him. Amen? And so this morning, I want to share this with you, and I want you to get your heart wrapped around this, that God loves you. And though you're facing battles and circumstances, it's not a lack of love for you that God has. It is the circumstances that God's love will see you through. In any and everything that you're facing, God's love is for you. Love perfected. If you go with me again, they're going to be pulling it up on the screen. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along with us. But I'm going to be reading out of 1 John, the fourth chapter, starting in verse 16. And we know and believe the love of God that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love. Everybody say, no fear in love. Now, now the rest of you join with us and say it. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has, has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that we, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Now this morning I want to talk about this titled message, Perfect Love. Love perfected through Christ. Love perfected is something that we, we need to understand and define. What is perfect love? We look at this and we begin to look at what understanding love is. Perfect love is finding the perfect mate and never ever having a, a squabble or a, a problem. Love is never having to run out of money when you need it. Love is never having a problem. No. Love, perfect love, is able to bear all things. Perfect love in, in the situation that we found and, and we defined it in, in our first message of defining what love is. Define really what Bible, the Bible says love is. Love is putting others before yourself. Love perfected means that we understand that part of it and realize and recognize that perfect love is that that casts out the fear of being left alone. Now here, let me go ahead and share the scriptures with you. What is perfect love? For John, the 15th chapter, Jesus described it this way. And first of all, he says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Goes on and the next verse is 1 Corinthians 13 says this. 13 and 13 says, now he abides in, uh, now abide in faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So we realize there that greater love is represented than laying down one's life for your friends and so putting one's life before yours. 
when you get married, and I shared this with you, but marriage, and I'll give you marriage counseling 101. Everybody look at me right here. If you've been married for 100 years, <clears throat> a few of you are close, but if you've been married 100 years or if you just are thinking about getting married and you're dating that one that you have, oh, she makes your liver quiver. You know, your heart throbs when they walk into the room. You're just caught up with it. I will tell you this. Marriage 101 is this. It is not a 50-50 because that will never succeed. Amen? Because you're always going to think they got one up on you. I'm given a hundred, I'm given 51 and they're taking 49. Come on. Marriage is a hundred percent giving of yourself to another. And when you love, you realize that you put others before yourself. And love in the, in the defining point of what love is, is defined in that. Now we all can, can talk about faith and we can all talk about hope and we can all talk about those things. But the Bible tells us that the greatest of all the things that we see is love. And if love is the greatest, then love should be what we personify in everything that we do and say. Now I want you to look at that person sitting right closest to you. Look them right in the eyes and say, I see love all over you. I want you to say it to your brother. Come on. Turn to him and just say it. Come on. If you had a fight on the way to church, turn to that one you came with and say, I love, love is all over you. I just see it. Now, you, you, you may be here this morning and you may say, well, Pastor, you don't know what I went through. You don't know the problems I'm going through. You don't know the circumstances that I'm dealing with. I will tell you this. It doesn't matter when you have the, the understanding of what love is. Situations don't qualify or disqualify you for the ability to love. And love perfected goes beyond the nature of this that, that God, that Jesus defines in the, even in his very point when he says the greatest of these and the greater love is laying down your, your life for your friends. Go ahead and pull that next one up. What is perfect love? The Bible tells us this in 1 John 4, 17 that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now that simply comes to the point, and, and I, I want you to understand, if this nature of gi giving us that is perfect love, then perfect love is when we understand that when you love God and you put yourself in the worship of God and the opening of God and you give yourself to God in the surrendering of your life, the Bible says, love the Lord God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and body. That means you put God first in your life. Then the Bible tells us that all things would be added to us. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. If, if you're going through a situation, the doctors may tell you that, that you have just a few days to live. You know what? You can have boldness in that. You can have confidence when you get in your car. Uh, the other day we were driving uh, and we were heading up uh, through, the, or we were heading up north on the freeways. I thought I saw three fatal crashes, three rollovers on the way up to go to deal with the church situation. One of them, we had just we were the first or second car to come up on the accident, and there were there were two people laying out on the highway, and one of them they had a blanket over, which covered up completely and we knew that that probably meant one person had passed away and you know when we when we saw that the rain and the fog was was very difficult to drive in and and we saw that and the first thing that satan tried to do was create fear in my life you shouldn't be on this freeway you should you you should stop you should get away and and, and you know what fear is not of god did anybody hear me when I said that? Because if fear is not of God, then what brought that source to my mind? I gotta, I'm afraid. I, I've got to be careful. Yeah, you've got to use wisdom, but I don't have to worry about it because I'm going to tell you something. If you drive on the freeways out here, you better pray up and you better be sure when you get in your car. Come on. And you need to understand that when you come before God, you can say faithfully this. I don't worry about tomorrow. Because I know who holds my tomorrows. 
because I surrendered my life today to Jesus Christ and I know that he is the Lord of my tomorrows. Come on, amen. You don't have to be afraid of what the enemy may bring against you tomorrow. You don't have to be afraid. Uh, we walk around and, 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 and we, we live in a day and age to when there's all kinds of crazy things going on. Come on, amen. And there's all kinds of phobias. I'm, I'm surprised. I was just, I was going to pass out. We, we do the you know, hand sanitizer and we've now got the wipes, too, that you can use. And I was going to, you know, the next thing, Joe, that I think we're going to get is masks. We're just going to pass out masks. So everybody just quit. Or we could just tell you when you walk in the door, please hold your breath so no one else gets sick. <laughs> we'll dismiss in an hour. Hopefully you can hold it that long. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. The Bible says I, can t I, I don't have to worry about it because I can touch any deadly thing and it will not harm me. And I can walk in the face of the world and I can walk in the midst of, of circumstances. Now, come on, I'm not telling you to be foolish about life. Don't go jumping off the building saying God will protect me. You need to understand that I don't have to worry about the things of, of the world. I don't have to worry about it because I know who's in control. I know if God be for me, who can be against me? That greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And everything that this world can bring against me, my God in me is greater than that circumstance. And I can push away the fears of my, uh, and the phobias that go around. I can push them aside because I know God is with me. If perfect love casts out fear and it gives me the day of judgment that I can be promised that if I go and God takes me home, I can tell you this, I'll wake up in heaven. Come on. If I take my last breath today, my next breath will be in heaven. Are you convinced of that today? Come on. If you're not sure, and there's fear in your life about where you... I, I remember as a kid, my dad used to tell me, now we're going to say our prayers before we go to bed. And I would kneel down. Hopefully this doesn't make the mic go crazy. But I'd say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, and I'd pause right there. I'm young. I'm thinking, if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And I told my dad, I said, I don't want to die. <laughs> my dad said, son, it's, I'm not saying that you're going to die, but if you do die. And then he said, you don't have to worry if you know that your heart is with Christ. And I'd, I'd start to pray again, and I pray the Lord my soul to take. If I die before I wake, Lord, don't let me die today. <laughs> but if you need to take someone, there's others that are ready more than me, just in case. <clears throat> I'd pray that prayer and I'd, I'd, I'd finish that prayer. And here's what I'm going to tell you something. Because we live in a world, you can go to church Sunday after Sunday. And today there are some of you that are sitting in this congregation that you've been a part of this church and you've confessed Jesus Christ, but you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ today. You're not sure if you've totally surrendered. Have I put God, have I, have I, the reason that perfect love gives us hope for the boldness is if I have chosen Jesus Christ and he is first in my life, there is no doubt in my mind. There is no doubt when I lay my head down that if I don't wake up, I know where I'll be. Come on. I have, I, this gives me the day of, of boldness and the day of judgment simply means that I am not afraid. You know, you know, there are a lot of people that come into the church and there are a lot of people that, that come into the sanctuary and, and, and they're afraid to be prayed for because they know that they're not right with God. Come on, amen. There are people that, that do this and, they, and they're not sure where they are. The Bible says there is fear in love. There is no fear. First thing that Adam and Eve did when they were struggling was this. The first thing that they had to deal with was fear. Because they had fear. They had fear. They had fear. They were afraid. The Bible says that when they had sinned in disobedience to God, they went and hid themselves and, and they hid in the bushes. Why? Because they were afraid. That's exactly what Adam said. The Lord asked him, said, well, what are you doing? And he said, I'm 
hiding because I was afraid. And from that point on, we hide from God and convince ourselves of the fear of our actions towards God. That's why when, when I look at this, when, when I look at this and it says there is no fear in love and there is and perfect love casts out fear, let me tell you something. I don't have to worry about the circumstances or the situations or the problems or the things that are going on. I don't have to worry about those things because perfect love is casting out the fear of the enemy that comes against me. I want to show you a few scriptures. Go ahead. The Bible tells us in Romans, we're coming up to this in our Wednesday night Bible studies and through the adult class. We didn't quite get there this week. But Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 35 and 36 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Go ahead and pull the next one up. Romans 8, verse 28 says, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who, who are called according to His purpose. Verse 31 says this, What then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? And finally in verse 37, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us, who loved us. Now I look at that scriptures and I look at those three verses and the reason that Paul could go back and go back to that one slide just before this one, Robert, if you will. The reason that Paul could say this was in that eighth chapter. He said, for I am persuaded. I know. I am sure of it. The reason that I know it is because I know. Because I know that I know. And today I ask you this question. Are you sure? Are you sure in your relationship with God? Number one, are you sure and confident of the things that you're going through? That God, nothing in this world can separate you from the love of Christ. No matter what you have done or no matter where you are, you are still loved by God. Now, God may hate the sin, but God loves the sinner. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Not because we were perfect that he came to abide and dwell with us, but he came to redeem us who are lost. I'll tell you two things for sure about the church. God didn't set up the church for the well and those that are healed and healthy. He set up the church so that we could mend and heal those that are sick and broken. Now that in itself turns the church around because all we have thought about is churches for those who are healthy. Now, when you go to the hospital, do you go there because you're well? You go there because you're sick, don't you? There's something wrong. There's something wrong, so you got to go to the hospital, and, and that, the hospital does its best, the doctors do their best, and they try to treat you, and, and, and they try to take all your money. But anyways, they... But they try to make you better. I was at the doctor the other day, and I had to renew my prescriptions. Anybody ever, some of you older folks you might know this. And they, they put you on this, and they say, you have to come to us, and, and, and here's, your, here's your pill bottle, and you go get these pills, and you take them for 90 days, and then in 90 days you come back, and we'll, we'll, you, we'll make sure that they're working, and then we'll put you on your way. I went to the doctor, and Phil, I was sitting there in the doctor's office, and Looked at me and said, so what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. Well, why are you here? I need my prescription filled. And then the doctor said, well, let me and breathe for me. Let me check. And then got on the computer and started looking at my age and everything. Said, well, we need to run some tests on you. We need to, I mean, you're now old enough that it's, you know, you need to start looking at some, we need to start looking at some things. And I'm thinking, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to find something wrong with me. I said, did my wife talk to you? Did she call you before I got here? If you have an anti-grouch pill, I'll take one of those. But, but as I was sitting there in that office, and the doctor went through all these. I said, I am fine. I don't even know if I need to take the... That's why we want to run these tests. 
So n Thursday I have to go in and give blood and they have to, I have to go see this specialist and that specialist and they have to do all these things and, and they're going to check me out. And I said, before you check me out, I could walk in and say, I'm fine. I could wear the shirt that says it. But they have to prove it. You know what? When you get to heaven, they'll know. They'll know about your relationship with Christ. You're not hiding it. You can't, you can't twist it or change it. You either totally surrender to God or you totally serve the enemy. The Bible says no one can serve two masters. Come on, amen? This is, I'll give you a very, this is another counseling point. Whatever you do, if you're married, don't go looking for other women. I'm waiting for some women to amen me there. <laughs> when, I, when I looked and I, and I said I do with my wife, I said I do. And I made that commitment. And, 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 and I said... For better or for worse, we've had some worse times. We've had some good times. And I said, but I love you. And I said, until death do us part. We have never talked about divorce, but we have talked about murder a couple times. <laughs> and we're considering, no, I'm just kidding. But, but here's the thing that you need to understand. When you come to God and you realize this, that you truly love, the, 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 the place that you come to in love is that you care and put the other before yourself. Married couples, if you've been married very long, most of us men have figured this out. That's why we can't make a decision on where we're supposed to go eat. Come on. Some of you, I can hear the amens rumbling, but everybody's afraid to say it right now. Where do you want to eat at, hon? I don't care. I said, well, we're, we're sitting in the car. Where do you want to go? I said, no, you, you decide. I want to let you decide where you want to go. And she said, well, I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I told her, I said, hon, I'm just putting you before me. Where do you want to go? And she says, no, but I want to put you before me. Where do you want to go? And usually Joe's sitting in the back saying, just go to Joe's Crab Shack and get it over with. <laughs> and so we go to Joe's Crab Shack. But anyways, how you make those decisions in life is hard because when you try to put the other before you, sometimes it's difficult. Surrendering your life to God sometimes seems to be complicated on how to do it because the things of this world oftentimes creep into our life. And, that, and it seems to be the battle of constant work that the enemy tries to do with us. It tries to present to us fear and create fear and the wonder, does God really love me? And am I really bound for heaven? Well, I can tell you this for sure. Right now, this very minute, you can be sure of where you're going to spend eternity. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And this morning, right now, we're going to do communion in a few minutes and Brother Don's going to gather a few of the guys and we're going to do communion. If you can go ahead, Don, and start preparing. Musicians, if you'll come and get ready. Here's what I'm going to tell you something is this. This nature of love, this work of love that God has so freely bestowed upon us is accepted by faith. And every day you live it by faith. We're not assured of the next moment that we have, the next breath that we breathe, the things that we have to go through. We are not sure of anything. But if you allow it, the enemy will convince you that you're not good enough. Come on. That you're not able to. That you're not strong enough. That you, that, that, and he creates fear. Come on. He creates fear and phobia, and he begins to create the, the atmosphere of, uh, of wonder and, and disillusionment. But I can tell you this, God brings peace on the scene. God brings peace on the scene. Perfect love casts out fear. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid to trust God completely? Because you... You're afraid of losing control of your life? 
You're afraid of, of that. And so you want to grip it as tight as you can and you want to determine, I'm going to, I'm going to make every decision I have to make. Or are you willing to surrender and say, Lord, I give you all. 